This is one of the many pictures of Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru and his Chinese counterpart Zhou Enlai from the 1950s. This decade saw the two statesmen meeting often and trying to build a game plan for how the two most popular states in Asia would coexist despite the ambiguities they had inherited. At the heart of that was the idea of Panchashil or the five principles of peaceful coexistence. But it was born even as its end was being planned. Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru and Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai signed the Panchil Declaration in Peking, now Beijing, on the 29th of April 1954. This was a bilateral agreement between India and China to promote national interests. Soon, it evolved into a wider Asian peace initiative. Interestingly, the Panchashil Declaration was actually just a preamble to the agreement. A part of a trade treaty called the Agreement on Trade and Intercourse between the Tibet region of China and India. The five principles mentioned and later clubbed as Panchashil were Mutual respect for each other's territorial integrity and sovereignty. 2. Mutual non-aggression. 3. Mutual non-interference. 4. Equality and mutual benefit. And 5. Peaceful coexistence. The Panchashil Declaration itself didn't last long as it was implemented more in breach than the observance by China. However, the idea behind its principles was endorsed at the Bandung Conference of Afro-Asian Nations organized by Indonesia in 1955, adopted and the scope of the initiative was expanded. More importantly, in 1961, the Conference of Non-Alignment Nations in Belgrade accepted Panchil as core principles of the Non-Aligned Movement or NAM. In a greatly polarized world, NAM stood out in opposition to Cold War rivals, the US and the former USSR. India under Nehru and later under Indira Gandhi played key leadership roles in NAM. Panchashil was based on Nehru's realism as well as idealism. China's thrust behind it was solely its strategic objectives. Sharing a long, largely undemarcated border, India and China needed to work out a framework for peaceful coexistence as they entered the 1950s. Emerging as free countries after the World War, India in 1947 and China in 1949, Nehru and Zhou Enlai felt that peace was imperative for the two ancient civilizations to realize their aspirations and full potential. They wanted to have a rightful place in the emerging world order. They shared a common objective to keep the world powers which had wreaked havoc on their people at bay. The principles of Panchashil epitomized India and China's aspirations. Yet they were not initiated even as things had been changing fast. China had annexed Tibet in 1950 ignoring India's concerns and interests. China's military intervention in Tibet was viewed as a sign of Chinese President Mao Zedong's expansionist designs. But Nehru felt Panchashil would restrain China from pursuing its expansionist and aggressive behavior. In this, he was guided by India's national interests. Through the agreement, India gave up its rights in Tibet and acknowledged it as the Tibet region of China. Around the time Panchashil was signed, India and China were facing unstable situations in their respective neighborhoods. The US was aggressively recruiting allies against the Soviet Union and to a lesser extent China to contain communism in Asia. Pakistan was about to join US-led international military alliances. Nehru anticipated 
the destabilizing effect that the growing arms race and military brinkmanship between the US and the Soviet bloc would have on India's security. He didn't want India to be a camp follower of either the US or the USSR. While advocating peaceful coexistence, he felt India was well placed to wean away its neighbors and newly Asian countries from the influence of Cold War rivals. As for China, it had actively participated in the Korean War against the anti-communist bloc led by the US. The annexation of Tibet had created unease in Burma, Indonesia and other Asian countries about the intentions of China. China therefore was keen to dispel the impression that it was an expansionist, warmongering country and that it had posed a threat to its neighbours. Panchashil was an instrument to convey that message. But all this was forgotten in the years to come as Chinese excesses in Tibet grew and the Dalai Lama was forced to flee to India. Meanwhile, China began making claims on territory along the borders with India. Finally, China sounded the death knell for Panchil and the principles of coexistence behind it when it attacked India in 1962. This war led to decades of distrust. While Panchashil was virtually dead, within years of its birth, its spirit survived in the non-aligned movement, which India championed for long years after.